Hello everyone, Whoopi here. Last month I had the chance to check out the demo for the upcoming Soulside game Deadbound. It was a game which I didn't know anything about but when I read the concept of the game it got me intrigued so I decided to check it out. To start with, let me introduce what exactly is Deadbound. Deadbound is an action RPG Soulside set in a world where fate and science clash. The game is being developed by Brazilian developer Trailford Studio and is set to release later this year. A little note before I start, I want to mention that the game is still in pre-alpha and the footage I'm gonna show is not final and it's subject to change. In this video I want to show you what I liked and what I didn't really like about the game and to show you the base mechanics so you can get an idea of what the game is about. The game design is beautiful and it does the job of introducing you to the dark world. What's interesting about the game though is the main combat mechanic which is called morphing. So what exactly is morphing. Players have the ability to absorb the souls of fallen soldiers and harness their powers for themselves. And while playing you can freely swap between 4 different characters that you have assigned and fight with them. But it's not as simple as just switching as each one of these characters has their own special abilities and combined properly with other characters can unleash more powerful attacks to destroy your enemies. The demo introduces 5 of those fallen soldiers and more will be available in the official release. This mechanic alone is very unique for a Souls-like game where usually you just make your character and you go and fight and kill bosses. I found it very interesting and this was one of the main selling points for me to try the game out. One interesting part is that you can simply put 4 characters in your party as they are from 2 different alliances one being called the cult of the dead and the other being called the cult of life so picking your characters from the same faction will provide you with benefits and buffs while picking from the opposite factions will give you some debuffs the game has a skill tree which at first glance might seem a little bit intimidating but once you look at it a bit more carefully it's not as complex as it seems the best part about it is the fact that all the points are shared between the entire party. So when you find a new soldier later on, it doesn't just start from zero, but instead you can use it immediately if you like the playstyle of it. Another point to make is that each character can be boosted individually, you can choose either their defenses, attacks, and you can make a very unique playstyle for yourself. Some characters can be tankier, the others can be the DPS dealers. You choose how you do it. I assume eventually you can level up everything about a single character and make it very strong. Now one thing that I was not a big fan of is the UI. In my opinion the UI can break or make the game. And while in this case it didn't really break the game, I have some complaints to say about it. On the bottom right you have your characters, their health and their stamina. And the top left is your currently equipped items that you can use, which includes heals, throwables and boosters. And at the bottom middle you have your synchronization bar, which I will explain how it works in the combat part of the video. My main dislike about the UI is the fact that the health and the stamina are exactly the same bar. It can get extremely confusing while you're in a fight to figure out how much is your actual health while looking at your stamina move around on top of it. And I will explain why that is the case about the health and the stamina. The more health you lose, the more stamina you lose as well. Your stamina is determined by your health. The problem is that the UI showcases your current health, health that you have recently lost, your stamina and stamina that you have recently used. These are four bars on top of each other and it can get very confusing to figure out which one is which, especially if you're in the middle of a combat and you want to decide do you want to heal, do you have enough stamina for ability. I just, I feel like it can be made better. Otherwise I think the tutorial explains the rest of the UI quite nicely and it's not that confusing to navigate through it. Only the health is the problem in my opinion. Now let's get to the combat. The combat in my opinion is very fluid but the AI definitely needs some improvements. You have to be especially careful if you're being attacked by multiple enemies as getting stun locked is quite easy and it will in most cases result in a death. Some of the characters have smaller dodges but are tankier while others have big dodge but if you get hit you get hit hard. While you have your character abilities the main damage dealer is the morph strikes. To be able to do a morph strike you need your synchronization bar to be full. We did mention the synchronization bar in the UI part and it is in the middle of the screen. You fill the bar by dealing damage and executing perfect dodges. Important thing to note here is that you need to carefully choose which characters you want to switch to for the perfect morph as every single one of them will execute a different type of attack. 
I find that mechanic very fun and it really gets you thinking what characters to use and when to use them, when to use your synchronization bar and how to execute your morph strike. The last thing I want to mention is the leveling up system for pretty much everything. While the skill tree boosts all your characters, you also have specific character talents. I do believe those talents were not included in the demo on purpose, but basically each character has their own specific talents which can boost a specific trait of theirs. This way you can build the perfect team for yourself and every single playthrough you do and every single player will have their own specific unique build. You level up those specific character talents with memory points which as I mentioned were not included in the demo and I still don't know how you're gonna be obtaining them. In the morphing section of the video I did mention that your characters can have buffs and debuffs depending on which four characters are in your party. In order to find those buffs and debuffs and change them you go to your bind essences section. In the bind essences section you can customize and manage your party, you can remove characters, add new characters, you can remove debuffs and apply new positives depending on how you assign your characters. It is a bit confusing, it takes some trial and error but the more you switch characters around the more you understand how exactly it works out. Lastly you have your item leveling system which is in two parts. Every item you find has Mystic Bonus and Asian Bonus and they are upgraded separately with two different items. Meaning that if you don't like the Mystic Bonus for example, but you do like the Ancient Bonus, you can only upgrade the Ancient one. And if you don't like the Ancient one, you can only upgrade the Mystic one. I found it very reassuring, but one thing to note is that you do have 5 slots for upgrading and I'm still not sure if maybe the middle slot will be with a third special item that upgrades both the mystic and the ancient one at the same time. Overall, I believe the game has a lot of potential and the idea is very fun and unique for a Souls-like game. As I mentioned, this was only the pre-alpha so a lot of things might change for the full release but I definitely am looking forward to seeing what the game will be like when it releases. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check out the Steam page of the game yourself, make sure to wishlist it as well. Thank you for watching and have a good one.